Carl, you're the you're the lead guy, so you go ahead. All right. Start talking. Yeah, welcome, guys. It is great to see all of you. My name is Carl Fengler. For those of you that I haven't met, I'm the associate director of career development here, and also entrepreneurship. And just to give you a quick background, this was begun uh, last year for the first time. Uh, there was a pilot program before that, but we really launched it last year. And we didn't know like how it was going to go, but we were really excited about it. And we ended up um, doing like the whole program, and then in April having the pitch competition with angel investors, and the new president, uh, Francis Bronnett, attended and was so impressed that she was talking about it to the board members, and actually brought me in to talk about the projects with the board members, and it was really incredible. It even led to some of the panelists to reach out to um, some of the people that presented to talk to them about how to further their ideas. And so the one thing that I want to kind of uh, let you guys know is it's not about your success if you bring your product to market or if you, you know, raise all this money. Obviously that's nice, but the main thing is that you guys really learn what it takes to actually make your idea happen, you know, the kinds of things that you need to do. And so this is an experiential education program, right? It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't cost you any academic credit. But what it's for is to really give you the knowledge and the experience and even the connections to be able to really be empowered to do what you want to do. Does that make sense? And so I'm really excited to work with you. And basically, because of that, you get out of it what you put into it, right? And the other cool part is whatever is good for you guys is good for us and vice versa. So it's also not a competitive thing. I know it ends in a pitch competition, but the idea isn't you know, who's the best. The idea is to give you a professional opportunity to get up there and actually present your ideas in a way that you would if you were to use that like in Silicon Valley or in you know, New York or wherever. Does that make sense? So you can actually get that funding. You know what a competitive landscape is. You know what a target demographic is, what an MVP is, all that kind of stuff. So today, what we're going to do is you know, we're just going to briefly introduce the team to you so you have a name to a face so when you get emails, it's not just this dude named Carl or Yvonne. You're going to actually know who we are. We'll be humans to you and, you know, we'll be even that much more supportive and stuff. And then I'm going to hand it over to our first speaker, Peter Raganetti, who I'm so uh, fortunate to have here. He's an incredible guy and so knowledgeable. And he's going to first kind of introduce you know, these concepts, and then Peter is going to facilitate you guys actually talking about your idea. Does that make sense? Okay. And so, so yeah, so um, kind of our number one goal when we started this was helping you. I'm James MacArthur, by the way. I'm the entrepreneur in residence here, and I have been spent my entire career kind of starting businesses, starting programs within other businesses, and building things for lack of a better term. And our number one goal here through this program, through this year, is gonna be giving you the toolbox. So each one of you is gonna go out, and whether you're working inside another company, working on your own company, building your own thing, you need to have a set of tools where you can walk in and confidently build out the use case for an idea, pitch it to someone, and then be able to make that real. And our number one goal here is to give you that entire, that entire journey, basically, in a toolbox that you can then use and take and duplicate, replicate, and maybe teach other people, do whatever you want with it, it's yours. And the number one thing that we like to kind of focus on is creating a community where everybody's okay sharing. And so I know there are always, as there always have been, and in fact, there have been some questions about, well, if I share my idea, somebody might steal it. And the reality is, nobody, nobody steals something that's, like, that hasn't been tested, that hasn't been proven. You don't steal things that aren't worth, that you don't know will work. But here, in this room, everyone here is here because they're committed to making something. And so what we want is we want you all to work together. This is not, this is a competition, but it's not a competition. But at the same time, 
it's very much, we want this to be a community, we want you all to work together. Use me as a sounding board, use Carl as a sounding board, use Yvonne as a sounding board. That's Yvonne, by the way. Everyone say hi to Yvonne. Yvonne, come on up. Yvonne, walk up here. <laughs> So Yvonne is in, invaluable because she's the one who you'll be getting so many emails from and and uh, I'm so lucky to have her. And so now, now you guys have a name to a face for Yvonne as well. So thank you, Yvonne. But basically the moral of the story is we're here for you and over the course of this year we're going to help you with anything you need to make your idea a reality. And that includes pitch help if you want to talk to people in industry. <coughs> We're happy to do that. Um, you're gonna be talking to people in the industry in the class, and we're gonna make a lot of resources available to you um, throughout this entire semester. If there is something and you're like, I haven't learned this yet, I wanna learn this, by all means, ask for it, and we'll, we'll find somebody who can come in and talk about it. So real quick, I just wanna open up to if there's any questions that you guys have that just burning questions before uh, we hand it over to Peter about like what this is or any confusion whatsoever. No? Pretty clear? All right. Great. I'm excited. All right. This work. So this is a TV. <laughs> cool. Thank and you. does and do you want Peter to put on the hey Peter, can we hook can we mic you up? Sure. I know you have a you also have a resonant voice, yeah, but I'm pretty loud as well, but you're fine. But to still mic me. this way then you really Catch every word. Hello, 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 hello. Can you hear me? Does that work? Okay. Should be. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Peter Ragonetti. Um, I'm a professor here at Pratt. I graduated from Pratt in 2004 with a degree in industrial design. I spent the first 10 years of my career building products for product design companies. Um, I was a design director at a large product firm, and I was working 14-hour days. And I said to myself, I'm going to work this hard. I might as well work for myself. So I went out and I started founding businesses. I don't know how many companies I've been involved with, but it's upwards of 15 now um, in every industry from consumable products to hard goods to technology to fashion. So I've sort of run the gambit on everything you'd ever want to try to make. Um, I've been through pitch competitions. I've been through fundraising. I haven't exited yet, but we're working on that. And um, I was a little bit involved in the first one as a judge um, for the refinery program. Last year for Ignition Lab, I wasn't able to make it in because I was just too busy. And I popped into Carl's office on Wednesday, and he's like, hey, we're looking for speakers. Uh, our first class is on Saturday. So I didn't quite get my full presentation put together the way I wanted, but luckily I've done this a lot. So I have a presentation that me and a partner put together for uh, Soho House, where we were doing a five, um, five-week course or five-month course, similar to what you guys are doing, on bringing your idea to market. So, you know, I'm sure a lot of you have very fun ideas and that, you know, now we have to test them. What is the value of an idea? It's, you know, when idea, everyone has them. So, does this work? So, bringing your idea to life. So, we, this was a five-part workshop we did. Luckily, I could just grab this thing. Um, whoop. Make it work. So, um... We, I was working with a company called Craftsman Ads. They're over in the Gowanus. They do um, workshops where they use local designers and artisans to teach a craft. Um, because of that, we were invited to start presenting on how to bring ideas to life. My partner in this presentation just launched an electric motorcycle company on Tuesday. He took $200,000 and a year and a half to build two fully working electric motorcycles. This is insane numbers, but I, I was very impressed. So this is Craftsman Ave, and my other partner is, come on, sorry, I don't use buttons. My other partner is uh, Taurus. Um, he's had a couple exits. Um, he's a great guy. He'll probably come in and speak in one of your classes for pitching. Um, these are all the classes that we, that we were offering. And then, so, when you think about launching an idea, there's all these different steps. And we sort of distilled it down to five major steps, which is what the Ignition Lab does too. So we talk about validating your idea. This is a very important thing. I've met so many people that have built 
full products out. They've gotten patents, they've run molds, they have, in their garage they have 30,000 units, and they've never actually seen if the market wants their product. We're talking about a couple hundred K invested without ever Googling, does this someone else have this on the market? So there's this whole idea about working in a vacuum and keeping things secret that you guys have to get out of. This idea of someone's gonna steal your product. As James said, no one steals unproven products. I've worked in product design for a very long time and um, I never had my, one of my employers come to me or another client come to me and say, hey, this student or this guy has this really good idea, let's steal it. <laughs> I have had them come to me and say, look at this product, it's sold 10 million units, how do we design around it, how do we make our own? So I've definitely been, I definitely do believe ideas are stolen, I just don't believe new ideas are very stolen. Because everyone knows, you know, how much, to put it in a better way, crap you have to go through to get something to the market. Like, you know, one of the talk, when we talk about competitive advantage, if, you're, if you have built something that's so complex and someone wants to steal it, it's gonna take them a long time to re-engineer it and steal it. Um, but just saying, I got a great idea. Unless you're, you know, creating something that is so, I mean, and like I teach a class here at Pratt on crowdfunding, on idea validation, on pitching. Um, and I run through this same thing with my students. Stealing ideas, all that. I, and then I'm like, guys, you know, you should be putting out every idea you have. And I've had a lot of ideas that I think are great that I don't have time to build that I openly tell people because I want them to build them. I'm like, I don't have time to build this food sharing program, but it'd be really cool if you built it. So go, take it. Um, so we need to talk about testing your idea, um, decreasing your cost and minimizing your risk. So luckily now the world is built for startups. Um, you, know, you know, 10 years ago in New York, it was a barren desert of startup land. You were either in Silicon Valley or you weren't competitive. Now New York has a great network of startups, um, great network of meetups. Um, we have tech stars here. We have a lot of incubators. We have accelerators. We have a lot of opportunity to get capital and to raise funds and to grow a business. Um, but you still need to have an idea that people actually want. <laughs> um, so I have an amazing idea and I can't tell you about it. This is what James and I were just talking about. You have no idea how often I hear this. I hear pitches, you know, I probably get pitched two to five products a week. Um, and a lot of times I get ideas and people are going, you know, I have this idea, I've had it for 10 years, it's amazing. And then they tell me about it and I'm like, cool, I made that five years ago. I'm like, here, you can look it up. Did you use Google? So one of my first rules is for any idea, it's um, ABG, always be Googling. If you have an incredible idea, stress test it immediately by going to the internet. Um, and the more feedback you can get from your customers, the better your product can develop. So this is back to, and if you guys have never heard of it, of lean startup MVP products. MVP means minimum viable product. How do you make something at the least amount of cost possible and put it into your consumer's hands so they can give you direct feedback? If you don't have consumer feedback, you're likely gonna fail. Um, there's a great story about Jeff Bezos building the first Amazon Fire Phone. As he was building it, he kept adding these different features. And his industrial design team and his UX UI team realized about three quarters of the way through the project, they weren't building a phone for a mass consumer. They were building a phone for Jeff Bezos. It was the phone he needed. He, so he spent all this money and he built something that no one wanted but him. And it was because they never actually tested it with consumers. So don't focus on your idea of, um, or your product, focus on the conversation around it. If you are not annoying the crap out of everyone you know about your idea, and uh, what I always say is, they should know so much about what you're doing that they're asking you about it before you. So you meet, so you see your friend at the bar, or at the coffee shop, and they should be like, how's that widget you're working on going? Because I saw you posting about it for three months on Facebook, and I'm annoyed, but I wanna know more. <laughs> so what do you talk about when you talk about your product? You have to talk about what its value is. Like, what market are you serving? Who is your customer? This is an important thing that I see a lot of young designers, inventors, entrepreneurs, go through where they don't actually know the market they're serving. They don't, and whenever someone says, I think I have a slide for this too. Yeah, it's not about ideas, it's about making them happen. Whenever someone says, I don't have a competitor in my market, that means you're not looking hard enough. You should have a competitor in your market. If you don't, you may not have an idea that anyone wants. Um, and believe me, James and I built a company around this once, <laughs> and it failed. <laughs> um, so, you know, 
what I want you guys to start doing now is answering these three questions. So I want you guys to, you know, when you get up and you tell us your ideas, and I, I think, I don't know if you guys are working in teams or groups, but I want you to get up and I want you to tell us what you're thinking about making, and we'll give you feedback. So the first major question is, who is this for? What market does it serve? You know, is it, and like a lot of times when we talk about segmenting markets, either people are like, it's for everyone. That's not the case. Or people are like, it's for babies in Norway that, you know, really like yogurt. And I'm like, all right, I don't know about that Norwegian baby yogurt market, but tell me more. So you need to know who your market is for. It's an extremely important thing. What does it do? What are the features? How does it work? And then why is it different? So, you know, a lot of times people are pitching me products that are existing products with one added feature. That is just like building onto someone else's stuff. A lot of times that's not the best plan for launching an idea. It's better to, I mean, what we usually say is if you're going to take an idea that exists and you're going to improve upon it, you need to improve on it times 10. And it also needs to be probably 100 times cheaper if you really want to compete with already established people. Now, there's great examples of companies upsetting markets that no one ever thought they would upset. James Dyson is a perfect one. James Dyson, when he designed the Dyson vacuum, he went and he designed it. He's an industrial designer. He's an engineer. He went and pitched it to vacuum companies. And he said, look at this. It's a bagless vacuum. How amazing is this? And every vacuum company goes, do you know how much money we make selling bags to consumers? We would never make this. So Dyson said, all right, I'll make it myself. So that is a value add. He added so much more value to the product that of course it's gonna beat its competitors. Um, I would say the same thing about Tesla and other things. So, you know, we were, we're excited to hear your ideas and James has been through a ton of pitch competitions. I've been through a ton of pitch competitions. I've sat on pitches. I've been an angel investor. I've found angel investors. So there's nothing you're gonna say that I, I mean, that I'm gonna be like, there's no dumb ex explanations. You just need to frame it so we understand what you're pitching us. So this is the most important thing. Clear, concise, who's it for, what does it do, why is it different? All right. This is more for the camera, right, obviously. So everyone can hear me? Cool, awesome. So he already told you that I ran, so that kind of took a little bit of my opening Sorry. line. It's all right, don't worry. But I will ask, how many of you enjoy running? Good, awesome. How many of you enjoy running more than 10 miles? Okay, number goes a little bit smaller. How many of you enjoy running more than 20 miles? Okay, here we go. Call, call is my competition too, so that's, that's good. Now, how many of you would enjoy running more than 100 miles? No? Cool. So, my big thing that I tried to do was, really what I would like to call it, I think it's a title, it's like how I convince corporations and people to give me enough money to be able to run across the country. And so, I set out that I would run for 75 days across the US, starting in New York City all the way to California. The intention was to, yes, the, inten the intention was to combine my two passions, which are running and filmmaking, and also in the way, in the process, raise some money for inner city youth to be able to attend college. What would happen is we create a very interactive process where as I was running, people would be able to follow me on Instagram, social media, and also we would do weekly recaps of the videos and the journey and the people that I met along the way. The end documentary was supposed to showcase what is America in this time and also answer the question of what is the definition of home and what does it mean to be American. So I am not American, I am from Mexico, but I was raised entirely in the US. I consider it to be my home and I also consider it to be something that defines me here, but I also very much embrace my heritage and my background. And so that, those were my, oh, I think we lost the one pager, but that's all right. It lists a lot of the facts that we have on there so that I could have walked you through a little bit. Um, and so I know for you guys, you know, you're all here like, hey, I have a product. I have something that I want to launch and I want to showcase. What are the steps to go through this, right, to make this a reality and happen? And so I know Peter, took you through that amazing presentation, which was very in-depth, and I hope you guys took a lot of notes, uh, because I follow the same process. You know, I work in film and TV. I'm a development exec and also a filmmaker. And so for me, essentially, every time that I launch into a new, into a new project, I'm always starting fresh. Like, it's essentially like a little business, right? So the first step is always, what is the business, right? What is the idea? What is it that you're trying to launch off? 
and working it, tweaking it, making sure that you start answering those questions for yourself and also finding out what can you do to excite people with it, right? As you're developing, you start sharing it with individuals so that then that way they themselves can start asking you questions like, oh, I see. I see what you're trying to do, but how are you going to do this? Or like, what kind of material are you going to use? You know, what kind of, who's your client? Who's your market? What are you going to? For me, I'm a storyteller, right? So for me, it has to be like, does this story resonate with people? Is there something that is attached to the project that I did that would make audiences go to the movie theater, especially for my market, and or tune in to TV, you know, or on a computer, or anywhere, wherever you watch and stream things. So that's like the first step. Obviously, after you start getting some of those questions answered and you start seeing how the market is resonating to the people that are asking you questions and you're confident enough that you have a project or a story that is strong enough to go, you start going after your financiers, right? The individuals who can help you actually launch this and execute it off the ground. Again, they're gonna have some questions for you and it's gonna be your job to answer those. And so with that, as that money starts to come in, you know, you start rounding up your team throughout this entire process. So for me as a creative, you know, I'm always making sure that I'm around people that one, will deliver the kind of work that I like to do, but also that are creatives and the individuals that will challenge me because that way I can also make the project way better and stronger and they will bring their own imagination, their own questions, their own things that will help really, really develop my project. So what I would say, don't be intimidated to work people with people that might have you know, more knowledge of what you're doing or who may be an expert in something else that you don't, right? When I launched off on my project, I was like, all right, I'm gonna be running across the US. I'm gonna need the best people that I can, people that are you know, very, very comfortable with what I'm about to do. And so I went around and gathered a team of seasoned executives who had worked you know, on field producers who were accustomed to going in and doing like crazy things like, hey, I'm totally comfortable getting on top of the van and recording you as we're moving and you're running. You know, I'll be totally OK if a dog chases you and we have to go in and rescue you. So that kind of stuff. So you know, that's exactly what I wanted. But I also wanted individuals who, were, who shot and who understood how to tell stories like this in a very cinematic and compelling way that would attract an audience to want to showcase the story after we finished. Obviously, then the next step, right, so you've taken it out to your financiers, the people who would help give you the money, then afterwards comes in the promotion, right? How do you advertise? How do you get a little bit of word of mouth? And you know, everyone says like word of mouth is the best, best way to do it. We didn't have a lot of money when we were launching this to be able to do huge, massive advertising campaigns, although we wanted to. And even though I had some corporate sponsors who were behind me, a lot of them were like, we will give you, you know, money to be able to launch the project and to be able to, you know, cover the expenses of what the project requires, but we have very little money to be able to advertise. And we're like, that's fine. We will take it to words. So I started to tell people about it and through that is how it increased like everybody was hearing about it through word of mouth you know people were talking about like hey this crazy dude from New York is going to try to run across the US you know even if they weren't lovers of running their big thing became like I'm curious I want to follow this dude I want to know if this guy is actually going to make it you know and it's almost people also started putting bets right like he's going to finish in Pennsylvania he's going to finish in Chicago you know that kind of thing but that was exciting because that got people going you know as I was running in my journey and going across the US, people would stop me, you know, people would be like, hey, yo, you're that dude who was running. And you're like, cool, how did you hear about it? And they're like, someone told me when I was in Pennsylvania, someone told me like on social media, you know, that kind of stuff. They were like, this is his route, kind of find him. And so it is always word of mouth, I think, is the biggest thing that you want. Like nothing gets a product out there, nothing really like, you know, gets a service out there than referrals from individuals who are there, right? Like, I mean, if you had a friend who told you, hey, I just tried this like new, you know, cream, whatever, it's like, it's the best. You're like, well, I'm gonna try it because I trust you, right? If someone tells you like, hey, that's a really cool movie that you should go watch, you know, you're probably gonna be inclined to at least check it out or look at it. So I can't say enough how like word of mouth is like a key way to really launch your project and get it out there and make sure that, you know, you succeed. And so for us, like that's what we did. We really used promotion as a way and the word of mouth to get promotion from people. And so then we didn't have to invest any money in advertising. Advertising came to us. So we started getting written up in newspapers along the way. We started getting spots on TV. And then afterwards, once we finished, by the time we were done, you know, everybody started coming up to us for distribution. So I sold my series to PBS, 
they're in charge of like whatever they want to do with it. But along the way, I've been touring it in different countries, well, different states primarily right now at the moment. Um, you know, so it's been really, really successful from that end. And so those that I would say for you guys to, you know, check out and see. Um, I'm going to show you a little clip. You said it goes like this, right? My dream is to run, to see the country I call home, to hear the stories of my neighbors, to find a common goal. I am Carlos Ibarra, and my dream is to run across America. I've always been a runner. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, so this has been a dream of yours. Yes. It's, it's a way for me to be able to do the two things that I really, really love. So it's like we're combining filmmaking and running into this project. And this is your support team. And this is the support team. It's the camera. So, yeah. You know, I want to do something big. I thought that was a way for me to showcase that this is how comfortable I am. This is part of me. I feel it. And you know what? If I'm not going to be here anymore, at least I got to see it one last time. So, yes, so, you know, a lot of the, this video came after, it's going to come up again, let's reduce this. Just, uh, My dream is to run. This is a different one that we did. <laughs> this was our Nike version that we sent over to people beforehand. Um, this was actually the video that we did when we started approaching all the sponsors and all the corporate companies. Um, you know, when I first set out on it, I was already a sub-elite marathoner, which means I'm in the competitive field. So I had my sponsor who I could go to and see if he would, they would, which is ASICS, if they would help promote this project. The minute that we got them on board, all the other companies started coming on. You know, they were like, cool, if a bigger brand, you know, especially ASICS, which is such an established, um, you know, running brand in the country, and especially like in the running community, would come on board, all of the other companies started coming on, which was really, really cool. And so for them, the biggest thing wasn't even what I was doing. It was like my story and like my motivation behind as to why I wanted to go in and go on this incredible journey, right? Because for them, they were just like, what is the, what is it that's going to convince us that you're going to be able to continue when it gets hard, right? Like when you encounter the injuries, if an accident happens or anything like that. And so for me, it was really to give a new definition of what a Latino is here in the U.S., you know, what we represent and what this country means to us. And so for them, that was something that they very much wanted to, to have their brand stand behind. And that's how all of the other brands came in and joined in too. And so for me, I always think, think about the story, think about the reason, because like how they said, that is what will drive you through to the end, you know, six months from now, a year, three years, five years, 20 years when you're still running that company. And it always has to be reshaped, right? As you reach certain goals and certain metrics, you're going to have to come up with a new motivation, a new reason why you want to continue to evolve your project, right? Otherwise, it's going to stagnate and you're going to have, you're probably either going to breach into another project or something else, but it's always about the motivation too and the goal. So for me, as I was going through this, right, I had a series of like 10, 15 mantras in my head as to why I was doing this. And when that mantra stopped working, I'd be like, cool, I'm going to tap into the other one. And then when that didn't work, I'd go into another one. And every day fluctuated. But the whole big thing was that, you know, I knew that at the end of it, I would be able to showcase a new representation of what a Hispanic and a Latino is here in the US. So yeah. Cool. So um, do we want to have them do the exercise first? Or do we want them to ask questions? Okay, cool. So what we'll do really quick, because I know you guys, everybody had a chance to pitch their project or whatnot, which is cool. So at least everyone has a little bit of an idea of what's going on. Um, what I would suggest for the first one is that just turn to whoever is not on your team right now. And again, repitch your project, what you're trying to do, the business, your idea, and then give them some time to ask you some questions about that project, right? So maybe can we do about super quick, like three minutes of that, and then take about two minutes to write down your question. And then after we finish that, what I want you to do is you kind of got to play a little bit of like who's who and find out somebody like if you're doing fashion, right? 
go up to people and be like, are you a fashion lover, right? Are you a fashion lover? Are you a fashion lover? And if they respond yes, right, that's the one person that you want to look at and <coughs> do the same thing. Pitch their project to them and then see what the questions that they have for you from that. But make sure that you're absorbing that, right? So that that way you can see what questions and what issues are popping up from both like a fan of your business or like what you're trying to launch and someone who may not be, you know, as interested in it or who isn't even familiar with it, right? So like I said, so the whole thing should take about 10 minutes. So we'll do three minutes for you to just chat with the neighbor next to you, two minutes for you to write down your notes, then maybe another quick minute to just find out. If you are a team, make sure that you pack up together and that you go with each other, um, and then three minutes of that, and then two minutes to write down your questions, right? All right, good, good. So th there is a point too to the limited time as th that you have, right? One of them, Key points. That's all right, right. One of the key points is like, how do you immediately engage that person that you're talking to, right? So that there's no dead air in you. And then also, how quickly can you pitch in a succinct manner? Is specifically what it is that you want to do or that you're trying to do, right? The whole big thing is, yes, I'm. Con that was another time for you guys, in case that you didn't want to do it again, um, right? So the whole big thing too is that what you want to do, even though I'm giving you like a condensed time. The whole big thing is that in under five minutes, you can convince someone to carry that conversation to go on to 30, an hour, two hours, days, weeks, right? That's the whole big thing, but also that you're clear about what it is that you're trying to do and why your project matters or your business, and that you can also hook that individual, whether it's someone that's interested in your field or maybe isn't interested in it, right? And so then that way, you can do that. So that was the whole point of this exercise. One for you to see like, wow, where are my holes in my presentation, right? Where are my holes? Like, do I know my business enough? Do I know the product that I'm trying to do enough to just rattle it off, right? That if unexpectedly, right? Because you're not, you can't always be on. That's like the big thing too. You can't always be on. You may be at a bar, right? And you're chatting with someone and someone starts talking about it and you're like, oh, I'm actually doing this. And then take it from there, right? Or you may be going to a pitch conference. Many of you will probably be going to pitch conferences if you do commit yourself to go and try to launch these projects. Guess what? They give you five minutes to be able to present your idea, launch it off, and do that. I do that a lot for film scripts that I'm trying to like launch. I'll go to market, and they'll give you ten minutes to be able to present your idea, show the demographics, show how it'll appeal to like a much larger mainstream market, and then that's it. You know, and there is someone who is there who's like, you got ten minutes, get out. You know, so that was the whole point of that exercise. And so I hope that that was helpful, and that you guys can continue practicing your pitches. Before we dive in. To questions, um, I'm just going to segue this into the homework. Yes. <laughs> um, so, for our next class or class session. Hey guys, when's the next class? Does anyone know? <laughs> yes, you guys are the best. November third. <laughs> All right. Um, so for next session, I want every group to go out and pitch 15 people on your idea. 15. Totally random people. I don't like. I don't want you to really know them. I don't want any of it. And I also want you to record one pitch into your phone as a video. And the pitch cannot be longer than thirty seconds. Then I also want every group here to go out and research five competitors in your field. So five people you will be competing against. What they do differently, and why why you feel like you're improving upon what they have. And then that will lead us into next session where we're going to be talking a lot about problem statements and a lot about the why you're building this. So this is all kind of, what we're going to do is we're going to take you from just this initial session, which is like, what at a base level are you doing, through to how do you talk about it, to what, it, how do you execute on it, how do you fund it, and then actually making it real by the end. So. so next session, guys, is uh, November 3rd, right? And we're going to have Ray, who some of you I told is, uh, he's someone who literally charges $2,500 for executives to spend an hour with. He's going to come in here and talk to you guys. He's literally the guy who's worked with the Empire State Building and is responsible for why it now lights up. So that's the type of people that, you know, like these incredible people today that are going to be here tomorrow that literally are here just to help you. So I'm incredibly excited about that. I also wanted to let you guys know that this is a certificate program. 
So that means every single one of you that sticks with it and ends up pitching at the end, not only will have that exposure to like the president of this school and to the VP and to have that opportunity to actually get up and present for the investor panel, but you'll also get an actual certificate that you can put on your resume to show that you went through this program, you had this experience, which is an incredible thing to do as a career professional, I can tell you, okay? So I tell you that to show you that we're always thinking about how we can really give you value. It makes me feel incredibly proud anytime I can help you and give you value, same with James and Carlos and everyone else that is involved in this program. So your commitment though is um, really important to me and so I hope that you understand that we put so much into it and hope that you guys can also, all we ask back is for you to do your best to stick with it and if you have worries or concerns, you can always email us, like myself or Yvonne or James. All right. And now back to your regularly scheduled questions. <laughs> now we're good. <laughs> uh, if there's any questions, yes. So, oh, at some point you mentioned that you had to sort of like reframe your idea a few times. Mm -hmm. So, how do you change your idea to the point where it's completely different from what you started? Or is that okay for you to do? Because we all have this passion, right? For the idea. Yeah. Well, I think you have to know what the end destination is of what it is that you want, and then be okay with the changes that will happen along the journey, right? So for this specifically, when I set out on the project, I knew that I had a very easy physical destination, right? It's like you have to get to California. The difference was like the how, right? Like how do I get there? And that's what I had to be very malleable with too, and constantly like reframing, restructuring based on like what weather, the conditions, what, the rest of my crew could endure to with me and their health and their safety. And so, yes, I mean, like for that, I think you just have to be always listening, right? Also, and listening and having the ability to be able to w uh, weigh the pros and cons, right? And then you making that decision. I mean, being a, an entrepreneur, being someone who's going out creating content requires so much about just trusting your gut and then being at ease once you make that decision and going with it, right? Because if you keep going back to that regret and being like, oh man, I should have done that. Why did I do that? It's gonna, you know, it's gonna stunt your growth. It's gonna keep you from moving forward and really fully adapting the new evolution that this new path that you took went through, so. In terms of getting eyes on you to start with, um, do you think that having If I can be frank, and my sponsors will kill me if I say yeah. this, but um, my sponsors were amazing. It was great to be able to have them and have their backing, but it really came from word of mouth. Oh, shoot, I have the microphone, right? You can use this microphone, yeah. Carlos. Um, is it on? Okay. Um, was really word, word of mouth. And also, sticking yourself behind your brand, the identity that it is, right? So I was saying that I'm gonna go and run across the US, so before, I started even doing it when I was training. I was constantly taking pictures of me running through it, right? I was attending running events. I was attending like meetings with like my community, my fellow runners, and they themselves continued to spread that word, right? I was sticking behind the mission statement that I set for myself. And I was going out to like inner city organizations, to groups, communities, and letting them know too because you know that wasn't just an exploitative thing. It was something that I really stood behind and that I really wanted to champion and go through. And I think that that's what most people are looking for too, like an honesty and a complete full 100% commitment to what you're standing for. And so, like how you said, I think the other way is that if obviously, if you have a product and you're making that, like if you're a fashion designer, right, you should be wearing your clothes all the time. Like it's almost like, forget the other clothes, <laughs> wear yours, right? And let yeah, people come up true. to you and be like, oh hey, I love that, where'd you get it? Oh, it's actually my design, you know? And they're like, where do I get it? But I think that that's what people love that you really stick to a commitment and follow through on it. Uh, my question is actually quite related to that. Um, did your sponsors um, sort of try to or, or successfully dictate some of the uh, aspects of your project, your running route, your, like how did you weather that? Like, you know, s sort of, you know, did they, did they make certain demands on you? And no, I had, my sponsors were very, very cool. Like, I also chose to be involved with sponsors that are very much about community and giving back and also just being aware of what's going on in our world. 
the only thing that they told me was like, make sure that it doesn't, because you are going to answer this question for what it means to be American, what is the definition of home. Just be very careful that it stays on a level that it's very neutral, but and that it's constantly politically, balanced out politically. Yes, that it's neutral on that on that sense, right? Like where you're not diving too much in one direction versus the other, because obviously they represent a brand and they want to reach out to a mass market, and so they're like, as long as you keep it about, you know, the persever like moments of perseverance, like going through, following your passion, they're like that's what we really love. But they're like, you have free reign to do whatever it is that you want. And so they don't do that. They're like, just give us a call when you need more shoes and socks. <laughs> Things like that. Did you have a question? Yeah. How long did it take you to run that course in the year? 72 days. So, yes. How many miles a day? I was averaging 45 miles a day. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as you guys, like, when I was approaching my investors and especially my corporate sponsors, the biggest question was like, okay, you say you're going to run this much. What is the plan? I knew exactly what I was going to do, right? I was like, listen. As a runner, I've been running since I was in high school. I've been running since I was a little kid. So I was like, I've got that under my belt. I've won X amount of like marathons. This is my current time as a marathon runner. Uh, additionally, this is my strategy. This is my plan as to how I'm planning to you know, approach this run. I'm gonna do a short day that's gonna be no more than, 45, than 55 miles, and I'm gonna do a short day that's gonna be no, more, no less than 45. And because for me, mentally, I needed to have something that told me like, okay, cool, tomorrow's a short day, so you're kinda gonna get to rest, you know? So I would go back and forth, and once they knew that approach, they started counting the times, I'm like, you're gonna make it, and they're like, you're actually gonna make it under the time that you said, and I was like, yes, but it, just in case anything happens, I wanna buffer in three extra days. Um, and so yeah, so having a very strategic plan. So yeah, the longest I ran one day was 55 miles, and then yeah, that was good, and that was all in one sitting. And I also broke it down into legs. So I would do 13 miles at a time, take an hour break, recuperate, eat a lot of food, then go back for another 13 and so on so. Yeah. What do you think is the key in storytelling? Anything you want to share about storytelling? Be passionate. Be, passionate. Be connected to it. Love like what you're doing. Like have a real, real reason as to why it is that you're doing that, right? I I came in, I think, at the tail end of yours, and she was talking about her connection to her background, right? And her culture and their community, so that in itself, like, that draws you in, right? Like, because people are always attracted to their heritage, there's a huge interest in knowing what comes back, and like, how to keep promoting that, right? How to make that happen, so that's part of it, right? So she brings that in, that's part of her passion, that's part of the thing that will connect it. It's also like the human element, right? We all have a heritage, we all have a background, right? I know you're trying to work in the mental, you know, not in the mental, but in the health field, right? So for me, I'd love to see, like, well, what is your connection to that, right? Like, do you have family members that you feel could, you know, benefit from this? Yeah. It, like, how do you experience that? So that kind of stuff, you know, for the guys that are building the wetsuit, right? Mm -hmm. Are you a surfer? You know, it's like, and if so, I'd love to hear, like, what your pains and he headaches are about these wetsuits, right? And take it from there. So that's what I would say. You have to be passionate. Again, follow through. You have to represent, like, the brand and, like, what it is that you're trying to do the product because you have to understand it and you have to love it so that I can love it too. Mm -hmm. um, you might have touched on this already, but how did you get some of your initial meetings with your sponsors? Did you already have connections to them? I did, yes. And this is this is the big power of like networking and communicating and letting people know what you're doing regardless of what stage the project is in. So like how I mentioned, I'm a semi-elite marathoner, which means I run with the professionals, which is good, they literally put me right behind them and then I chase them. Uh, so, <laughs> so then um, A6 is already my sponsor for that. So they were like a huge lead in. But the thing is that I didn't have the relationship with the actual person who gives the money to you, right? Or who could sign off on something like this. I had my brand sponsor who was like, cool, he's a runner. So he, they're like, she's like, listen, I can get you the meeting. It's up to you to sell it. You know, I can already tell them that you're one of our sponsored athletes and we'll get you through there. But that's how I got my meetings. And then from there, as I started sharing with people, you know, other people started coming about and being like, hey, do you have a sock sponsor? And I was like, no, I don't. And they're like, well, there's this new brand <laughs> called Stans, right? Stans was just about to launch. They had just been out for about a year. And so they were about to launch this running sock line. And so they were like, what better way than to have you promote that and show that our socks can endure 72 days of running <laughs> nonstop. And so when I got them on there, the same person who like reps them in terms of like agency got me to be the Coco, 
you know, got me AAA, got me all these different things. So it's just word of mouth. And so what I would always say is share with people and also find like where the connections are established. And those like six degrees of separation, trust me, those can get you to that direct person that you need. So I would definitely say don't be afraid of just telling people about it. And you don't need to meet with the big head, you know? It's like you can meet with someone who is on their, you know, that works for them because that they're also sometimes some of the ones that are championing you. If you were doing it again, what would you do differently? Not like not in the physical sense, but yeah. in the I don't know if you would have like dreamt bigger or gone a different route, like not documentary style, or I guess if I yeah. to be honest, if I would have done it differently a little bit, I would have invested a little bit more money in the promotion of it, like in the advertising, right? So you asked about strategies and thinking of what we needed to do. You know, in that, when I was preparing originally for the journey, I was very much thinking about the financial constraints of feeding, housing, and traveling for a total of 80 days with the team for seven, you know, seven days every single day. And so for me, I was like, okay, so that's all that I could think of. So I was like, there's no money, there's no budget for like advertising. But should we have done a little bit more advertising, the extent, the outreach that we could have done would have been much, much greater, mm -hmm. right? And so with that, that's something that I wish that I would have gone back to. I also would have wished that I would have reached out to a few more people um, that could have joined me on the actual journey and we could have planned that. Like I had a lot of impromptu people that met me while I was running, another guy from California started to run the opposite direction <laughs> and we met in Colorado. And that was a lot of planning with their PR people and then my people, And but we made it work, right? We were like, we're in La Vida, Colorado, let's do it, you know? And so we did and that was like a huge thing, you know, people were like, oh my God, two crazies trying to run together, <laughs> let's capture this moment. So. So yes, so I would say like I would have done that too, like the same thing. I wish I would have reached out to a couple more people and band together organizations, more individuals that could have partaken in this journey because it was very lonely, but it was very beautiful too. <laughs> have you thought of live streaming? Well, so we did. So we tried to do, like how we said, what we were trying to do, we were running on Instagram and through the Instagram was how you could get live feeds. So uh, the guy who followed me, he himself was responsible for taking all the pictures. He was a photographer, so he was cool. And it was his job to upload like these like pictures every couple of hours so we could be able, you know, the audience and everybody could be following us. And then every week we would do a recap with one of the episodes of what we were doing. And to take it back, we would have planned. We put a, probably would have put two extra people on our team just because we fell behind on our like streaming and on our timing because our people were wiped out. You know, it's like they were traveling and they were also with me on these 13 hour days, you know, if not more. And so, yes, we try to do Periscope, but uh, let me tell you, there are places in the country that don't have reliable Wi-Fi, so it gives up very, very easily. So so it seems something that we immediately got to see that wasn't gonna work as much as we wanted to do. And to our benefit, we're like, to not have to face that problem, and again, to not fail our audience members, we're like, we need to go with something that's safe and that's guaranteed that we can do. And so we're like, we're gonna be in hotels, so at least hotels will always have guaranteed Wi-Fi, so at least we can upload pictures, even if it's an hour late, two hours late, whatever, we'll get a chance to upload them back. But yeah, but we were trying to do Periscope for a little while. It was too hard. My team was trying to get me to run with the GoPro so that then they could take all of that footage and take it from my perspective, but it's very difficult. It's very uncomfortable to run with a camera on you all the time. Already when I'm a runner who doesn't run with a lot of stuff on me, um, I had to have like a safety pouch on me all the time with like pepper spray and like sunblock and toilet paper, you know, <laughs> all these different things. So yeah. What sort of opportunities emerged after you finished with that? Uh, tons of them, really. To <laughs> to be honest, like I said, uh, university started calling me to show work in progress. A lot of just. Um, development execs called me because they're like, cool, you're coming up with crazy ideas. Actually, that's how I became a development exec. What's people. a development exec? So a, de a de development exec is someone in the film and TV industry who gets to green light projects. So you get to decide the merit of whether the project actually has viability to go in and be on TV or be made into a movie. And then my job with it too is to actually help develop the project to come to fruition and be the best possible you know, movie, TV show that it so I work hand-in-hand -hand with the individual. So not only do I work out ideas and concepts, but I also follow through on the execution of the projects.
Yeah. And so yes, so a lot of opportunities came up from that. You know, people started asking me to help them develop their projects, to help them do their films. So a lot of producing of different projects, commercials, you know, TV shows, movies, and then right now I'm a development exec, which is great and super fun and a lot of work, but <laughs> it's good. So and that's again, you know, you have to love what you do because it's a lot of long, long hours and it's better that you're doing something that you love and that you're passionate about. So then it makes it a little more enjoyable. Did you have the team uh, on the day that you started running or you sort of like developed your entire team while you were on the journey? We took time to develop the team. So I brought on my producer, Taylor Nagel, uh, was on probably, so from when the concept of the DA started to the actual execution was eight months in the making. And then by the time we finished, it was almost like a whole year, right? It was like 11 months and a half. And so Taylor came on board about um, like the three weeks after I had the idea. And then from there, we started going out to individuals. Our VP came in maybe like two months before we set out to production. My co-director and head director too, who was on it, she also came in about halfway. So we slowly started to build our team. But for me, it was very, very important that I wanted to spend time with my team before I set out on this big journey with them and they were gonna be with me. You know, we had Dean Carnassus who is one of the ultra elite marathoners. We had his team who helped us like prep for the journey. Really? Dean Carnassus? Well, he didn't, his team, his team. So like the people who- so he's the he man wrote, who's run like 50 marathons. Yeah, he's written like a bunch days. of books on ultra marathon running. Yeah. He's really famous in that community. That's yeah. interesting. So they, so th again, through like communication, through talking to people, through sharing it, I got connected with it. They're like, you need to talk to this guy because if you're going to do that, he's the expert. He was in the middle of some other journey or something at that time. So he wasn't able to meet with our team, but he got his production team who recorded his 50 marathons from 50 days. And then his advisor, who like is his coach, talked to me about it too and how to prepare both mentally and physically. And then they also, you know, talked to my team about everything that would be ha that could happen to me while I was out on the road. And so that's for me that was very important that they knew who I was prior to going on this journey because while I was on the journey, you know, they were like, you don't know what his emotions are going to be, you don't know what state he's going to be in. So it's good to just know who he is beforehand. So yes, so we did meet with the team, and I also think that. That requires that, right? Like, if you're gonna put yourself in a scenario, like especially like if you're launching like a business, right? You have to be with a partner that you trust, that you can have open communication, and that you can also have an open discourse if you disagree, so that that way you get to a good, you know, end point with it. Last so, question, yeah. guys. Anyone have a final question? Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Carlos. Thank you thank so you guys. much. Guys, we made it. That's the first uh, session of the Ignition Lab. You guys are amazing. I love getting to meet you guys. Um, the final thing is, you've just been emailed um, a survey. It really helps us out if you just like give us feedback so we can show that our program is helping, You know that it's making a difference, and we can keep it going. Otherwise, I can't wait to see you guys on February 3rd. Do the homework that James told you, and you can and just email us. And if we email you something, it's always nice if you go, got it. Because last year, sometimes we'd email like information packets, we'd email questions, and sometimes we wouldn't hear any responses. Even though the people were doing the assignments and were actually doing it, they just weren't letting us know, so we had no way of knowing. So it's always helpful, even if you just take two seconds to do that Google response like, Got it, thanks, or whatever, that makes a huge difference. All right, thank you guys. Have a great one.